One study in the late 60s, early 70s, which was the landmark study in genetic psychiatry, in behavioral genetics as a whole, a study carried out by a guy at Harvard named Seymour Ketty. And this was a phenomenal study and phenomenally important. Here's what Ketty did. Ketty was dealing with the notion at the time of making sense of schizophrenia. And as we will see when we get to the schizophrenia lecture, the number of nutty ideas out there as to what the cause of this disease is, is just staggering. But what he was interested in was getting at the notion that was kind of floating around in some corners of the field at the time, which is schizophrenia has a biological component, a genetic component, and what that was was viewed as very unlikely. But what Ketty did was try to go and test this. So what's he going to do? He's going to look at adopted individuals who are schizophrenic and see are they more likely to share that trait with a biological parent or adoptive parent. You see the logic already. Okay, how many schizophrenic adoptees are you going to find out there where you also were able to figure out who the biological parents were? This was not an easy task. And Ketty's insight, his intuition, was to go to one of the places on Earth where that was most easily done, which is Scandinavia, where all the Scandinavian countries keep records like you cannot believe about everything on Earth. People understanding, for example, how the age of puberty onset in girls have been decreasing for centuries. They're always using Scandinavian data because every single thing that could possibly be recorded has been written down and stored someplace there in moth-proof vaults. And what he was able to do in ways that no human subjects committee on Earth would approve these days is go through the entire database of adoptees in Denmark and identify all of the cases where somebody adopted had wound up with schizophrenia and then able to go back and see who the biological parents and the adoptive parents were. This was a staggeringly large study. He and a team of psychiatrists spent years in Denmark doing this because one of the things they did was they then did follow-ups and they themselves interviewed all of the potentially schizophrenic individuals on there so that they would have the same diagnostic standards all across the board. As we'll see in the schizophrenia lecture, it's a very squishy diagnosis. So having the same psychiatrists interview viewing every possible person, hugely important control. This is part of what took them years and years. And then they finally were able to say what the patterns of similarity were. And here's what they wound up seeing. You take any random person on the street who is schizophrenic, and you take any other random person off the street, and you ask, what are the odds that the second person shares this trait with the first person about 1% likelihood? What's that another way of stating? In the population as a whole, there's about a 1% incidence of schizophrenia. So you start with the circumstance where the biological parents, neither of them had schizophrenia, and neither of the adoptive parents did. And what's the incidence in this population among adoptees? A 1% schizophrenia rate. That's just average people off the street, that's the usual rate across Western European population. So 1% rate. Now, now, let's have the person growing up in a different sort of household. This is a person who has no biological legacy of schizophrenia, but was brought up in an adoptive household with a schizophrenic parent. And what you saw then was a 3% chance which with this enormous sample size was a highly significant, reliable number. So in a rough kind of way, being raised in a household with an adoptive parent who is schizophrenic approximately triples your risk of a schizophrenia diagnosis. But then the really critical one, which is you were raised in a household where neither parent, adoptive parent, is schizophrenic, but you have a biological legacy among your biological parents of schizophrenia, what do you see a 9% incidence? 
approximately a three-fold increase above that, almost a tenfold difference now over what you see in the general population. This one number was what roared through the field. This was viewed as the clearest evidence to date for a genetic component to a psychiatric disorder. Regular old person off the street, 1% rate, have a biological parent with schizophrenia and share no environment with them because he got adopted away and almost tenfold higher chance of getting the disease. Then, final thing, looking at the incredibly rare people who got screwed on more different fronts than you can imagine, who had a biological parent with schizophrenia and, whew, got out of there and landed in an adoptive household with a schizophrenic parent. So you get the double whammy there, and what you saw was a 17% incidence. What's interesting about that number? Okay, what this cell does, what this number does, is reflect the increased risk by having a biological legacy of schizophrenia plus the increased risk of having an adoptive environmental legacy of schizophrenia. So let's see, what's the difference between 1 and 3? That's 2. What's the difference between 1 and 9? That's 8. So thus, it should be about 10 percentage points. It should be about a 10% rate. What are you seeing here? A synergism. Get yourself a biological legacy and get yourself a schizophrenic household to grow up in. And it is not just adding up the two degrees of risk. There was a synergism, a non-additive synergism. That is an important hint for us of stuff to come. So this was this landmark study. This was phenomenally difficult to have pulled off. It got Keddy a number of Nobel Prize nominations. This was the study that showed the first definitive modern science evidence for a heritable basis to a psychiatric disorder. And this became the gold standard for how to do behavioral genetic studies.